narrative today as we talk about an important issue for all of us, and that is how we define health and wellness for ourselves as black women. It's important for us to have a clear understanding of what it means to be healthy and well. And I think we all have different definitions and different interpretations of that. And so we're going to have some lively conversation today as part of our first in a series of a room full of sisters discussions where we're bringing together women from all across the country, all ages, all demographics to share their insights and their feelings and their attitudes about different health issues. And so this one, as I mentioned today, is focusing on health and wellness. My name is Valerie Rochester. I'm Director of Programs and Training here at the Black Women's Health Imperative. And we are so pleased to be able to offer this as the first in a series of discussions and look forward to having many more of these as we move forward in bringing health and wellness to life for the women that we're working with all across the country. And I'm going to ask now our president and CEO, Linda Goler Blount, to come and share a little bit more about the work we're doing in communities and also to talk with us about the new strategic vision for the Black Women's Health Imperative. And so now I'd like to introduce to you Linda Goler Blount, president and CEO of the Black Women's Health Imperative. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, as we're playing musical chairs here. Okay. Hope everybody is doing well. And um, let me say, after eight months on the job, I'm really thrilled to be here to have a chance to chat with you all and welcome you all to this Room Full of Sisters Google Hangout series where we define wellness. Let me get that organized. So many of you are familiar with the um, Black Women's Health Imperative and our 31-year commitment to improved health outcomes for the nation's 20 million black women and girls in this country. And in fact, we're the only national organization dedicated to the health and wellness of black women emotionally, physically, and financially. So I'll just let you know I hear an echo. I hope they're not hearing the echo. Okay, great. What you may not be familiar with is our new strategic vision for the organization and our investment in making sure that black women's health matter. We have several new initiatives that we'll be launching over the next few months. Um, and we're, what we're going to do is bring sort of awareness to the issues of black women's health and how they connect to social determinants that you all are familiar with, but also to help us realize a vision of getting to three million more healthy black women by 2020. Each day, nearly 130 black women die needlessly. Over the next five years, we'll be focused on eliminating the factors responsible for avoidable mortality, ensuring women not only have access to health insurance, and use it wisely, but also understand the connection that health insurance has to their overall financial wellness. And we'll mobilize thousands of young women to understand and advocate for their reproductive rights. One other aspect of the work that I want to mention is the way we're going to do this. We'll use technology and big data science to develop and implement programs and messages that are targeted to specific populations in specific geographies. And we'll be able to predict what kinds of interventions will be most effective and what kinds of outcomes can be achieved. The way we'll maximize, that way we'll maximize our investments, improve health, health, health outcomes, and strengthen families and communities. We will change the dialogue and how we as black women define health and wellness and how we experience it. Rather than focus on what makes us sick, we're actually gonna focus on what keeps us healthy. And we're gonna take that knowledge and expand it to a much broader population in this country. So that's what brings us here today. We're excited to begin this dialogue with you as we explore wellness and what it means to each of us 
This discussion is just the first step in a new initiative we're launching in the coming weeks called Grab Your Girls and Go. With this campaign, we're supporting black women to do more, eat smart, and get connected. To make those connections that are important to our lives, we women like to do things together with our friends and our loved ones. So um, what we're encouraging women to do is to grab the girls in their life and move toward making healthier lifestyle choices. Grab your girls, all of them, and go get a mammogram. Grab your girls and learn effective stress management techniques. Because we understand the real lives of black women, our Grab Your Girls and Go program will show women across the U.S. the doable, easy, yet highly effective things they can make a part of their everyday lives that improve their physical, emotional, and financial well-being. A few months ago, here at the Imperative, we conducted an informal study to try to understand how black women define health. We just asked women to give us words and phrases for what health meant to them. And I must admit, I was surprised at what we found. Over 80% of the words had to do with their, their psychological well-being, psychosocial terms. I'm in control. I'm at peace. I'm calm. About 10% of the words had something to do with financial situations. I'm in control of my money. I can take care of my family. Really, only about 5% of the words had anything to do with physical health. So that suggested to us that the way we've been approaching health and health equity might be all wrong. What women were seeming to say was, if I can get my head right and my spirit right and my money right, I can take care of everything else. So we encourage you all to look forward more information starting in December about our Grab Your Girls and Go program. It'll be on our website, bwhi.org. So today's panel will, is going to be truly amazing, and it will put how we as black women define health in perspective from the reality of our lived experiences. These presentations are going to be thought-provoking, and I imagine that they'll get all of us thinking in new ways about what health means, how we can use this information in our work every day, and how we can empower the women that we serve to grab their, goes, their girls and go. So I encourage all of you, grab your girls and go. Have a fabulous conversation. I'm looking forward to the dialogue. And now I'm going to turn this back over to Valerie. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Linda. And as you can tell from Linda's comments, we're going to be having some exciting things happening here at the Imperative over the next few months. And they will all be focused on the issues that Linda mentioned, looking at our physical, emotional, and our financial wellness. And as you can tell, we've had a lot of discussions here at the Imperative around this issue. And we have our own thoughts and ideas, but we really need to hear from our audience and make sure that what we're doing is focusing on what you need, what you want to know, and what you understand about living and being well. And so that brings us to the feature of our session today. We have a great panel of speakers and presenters, as Linda mentioned. And in order to help us get started, I'm going to now turn it over to a woman we have grown to know and love, our favorite nurse, Nurse Alice Benjamin, who's going to serve as our moderator for the panel. Nurse Alice. Thank you, Valerie. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this. I really am. I've been working with you ladies um, for the last year now, and it's been, it's been an amazing journey. And I'm excited about today's discussion around defining wellness. Um, and just to give everyone, the viewers online, an overview of what we're going to talk about, I know Linda mentioned uh, a lot of the things that the imperative was working on, but today's conversation, we want to have a sisterly, organic conversation that's going to include the core elements of wellness the physical wellness, the financial wellness, and the emotional wellness, because these are all important focuses of the Imperative's Grab Your Girls and Go movement. We're also going to discuss the importance of making connections among all of these factors that impact the lives and health of black women. 
and our wonderful panel will also share how black women can chart their personal path. And lastly, we want to explore the shift of black women's beliefs and attitudes towards health and wellness and discuss the benefits and challenges that black women may be experiencing when trying to adopt these lifestyle changes. So that's an overview of what we're going to talk about. It's going to be an organic conversation, something, you know, very sisterly uh, talk and um, wanted to remind um, our viewers, you know, although we, I will be asking our panelists questions, please, please feel free to ask your questions as well. There's a Q&A uh, feature, so if you have questions, please um, type those in. We'll be happy to address those. And then also, if you are on Twitter, which we hope you are, that you're also tweeting as you go along, and we want to make sure that you use the hashtag GYGO, grab your girls and go, so we can share this conversation beyond this Google chat, but with our other social media outlets as well. So. Uh, without further ado, I want to get started into some wonderful introductions. I'm really excited to be introducing a, a wonderful panel of ladies. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the lovely Dr. Uh, Phoenix Austin, affectionately known by her followers as Dr. Phoenix. She is a physician, a certified sports medicine specialist, fitness consultant, and author. Dr. Phoenix is based out of Washington, D.C. area and has been featured in countless major publications as well as on national media networks including NBC, Fox, News One, Now and Radio One. So Dr. Fe Dr. Phoenix, welcome. Hey ladies. Thank you for being a part of our panel. And also we have the amazing Dr. Allison Hicks. So Dr. Hicks is a clinical psychologist and media consultant with an emphasis in health and has been trained in multiple medical centers in Los Angeles, including Cedars-Sinai, my hospital, uh, Kaiser and Kaiser Permanente. Uh, Dr. Hicks has also presented research around the world focusing on minority women, physical appearance, and the impact of media on the body image. So Dr. Hicks, thank you for joining our panel. We're, we're so glad to have you. And last but not least, we have the wonderful Dominique Broadway. Dominique is a financial, a personal finance coach, speaker, finance expert, and entrepreneur. After working for major brokerage firms early in her career, she founded Finances Demystified and the Social Money Tour. She has a strong passion for working with young professionals, entrepreneurs, and people of all ages to bring their dreams to reality and easy to understand and a social experience. So I think with this wonderful array of experts on our panel, we are in for a delightful converse and insightful conversation. And I'm going to go ahead and pose the first question, and I'm going to pose it to you, Dr. Phoenix. How do you define wellness? So wellness, I, I like to keep wellness just short and sweet and to the point. Uh, to me, wellness is basically achieving a balance between uh, physical and mental health. That's how I would define achieving wellness. And, you know, anyone can can uh, be physically fit, you know, or mentally sound. But if you have the other component that's out of balance, then I feel like you haven't totally achieved wellness. So for me, it's a comprehensive thing. It's It's achieving balance between both the physical and mental aspect. Okay, great. Now, Dr. Hicks, how would you define wellness? Dr. Hicks? She's on mute. Well, let's go to Dominique. Dominique, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, can you define wellness for us? Yeah, so for me, um, wellness yeah. just has so a for me, I was so, for me, I was so, for me, I was so, Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, is that? I think Doc. I'm okay. back. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, Dom. Yes. Okay. Do you want me so, to continue? So, Dominique, or? if you okay. could go ahead and finish your. Yes, please. Okay. And then we'll get back to Dr. Perfect. Hicks. Perfect. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. So for me, uh, wellness um, it has a lot to do with overall, um, you know, just being overall overall health. I guess I would say, which has a lot to do. Obviously, my my expertise is, is finance, and I've really been able to see, you know, how when people aren't financially comfortable or financially confident, how it's had just a huge effect on their overall health. So for me, it's like you that it's the mental, the physical, but also the financial as well because, you know, even when you have the finances, it gives you the ability to take care of yourself um, and provide that, that better uh, wellness. So I think it just has to do with every single aspect of your life, just having overall wellness. Okay. Thank you for that. Now, Dr. Hicks, can you provide us your definition of wellness? Can she hear us? Dr. Hicks? Okay, I think we're having some some difficulties on her end, but we're gonna we're gonna keep oh, the conversation I, rolling because it's you know, very I'm back. Can you hear me? All right, glad to have you back. So we're very interested. Hi, everybody. In your <laughs> Great. My definition of health really reflects balance. I think health isn't just the lack of disease, the lack of infirmity. It's really the presence of balance between all the different areas of our life, including you know financial, emotional physical health and spiritual health, as well as social um, integration and having connectedness. So that's that's kind of my concept of health from my perspective. Okay. So and all of you ladies definitely touched on all the important components of the Grab Your Girls um, campaign, the physical wellness, financial, and the emotional piece, which are all very important. So I, I want to ask a, a follow-up question to that is, um, are these areas important in black women's lives? And if so, do you believe black women are looking for support in these areas? I mean, how well are we doing in these areas? So who, who wants um, to I'm going to start with you, Dr. Phoenix. OK, so I'm up first. Um, I absolutely, I think, uh, you know, black women are seeking support and advice in these areas. I think all women regardless of race, you know, want a bit of, of financial advice, uh, emotional advice, physical advice. Uh, and I think it's it's very important overall. So, um, you know, I don't think it's it's really, this, this question, while I see the significance, I don't even think it's really a question of race. I think just people as a whole, women as a whole, are definitely seeking advice in all of those arenas. Okay. Definitely yeah, I would, I, yeah, I would your have, thoughts? yeah, I would have to agree. I mean, I think obviously, you know, we, we all work with, you know, with individual, the individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis every day, and they're obviously constantly seeking our help. But I think that, you know, in my, in my field, you know, a lot of times people have to, uh, they have to kind of build up the confidence to say, hey, I need advice or I need guidance. Um, is, is what I've seen. So a lot of times, like from a financial perspective, people want the help, they want the advice. But for sometimes they feel like they're gonna, they're not gonna ask until they're ready. Um, and you know, I always tell people there's never gonna be a perfect time. So whenever you, you know, you feel like you don't have that guidance or you need help, ask, ask then and ask early. Um, so, but I do think people are definitely they're looking for the help. <laughs> okay, Dr. Hicks, you have anything to add with that? Absolutely. Of course, I absolutely agree. I think African American women are looking for help in regards to mental health issues, but there's in the African American community there's a lot of stigma surrounding mm -hmm. mental health and reaching out for help. So I will say that people are interested, women are interested, but I think that there is some hesitation in regards to coming in for therapy and um, just to encourage people that if you feel like you need to talk that I, I think you should. Right. And and I'm so glad you you brought that up. And this is where mm -hmm. one of these organic questions is going to come in. Um, this mental mental wellness. Um, you mentioned it had such a negative stigma, you know, and not just for for black women, but for people in general. How can what would you suggest to women who are hesitant because of that stigma? I mean, how can we get them to you know? overlook that stigma and still get help because I think there are people who really want it and still just don't do it because they're afraid of what they will look like to their peers and to their families. I agree. I think a part of it really goes into the way we perceive it as well. So I think we get a lot of um, 
backlash from, and I love the church, I'm a part of the church, but I think we do get some backlash from the church and just some miscommunication and, and difficulty understanding kind of what therapy is. And so the first thing I like to tell people is that therapy is 100% confidential. You come in to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist, absolutely nobody will know unless you tell them. And so I think that's the first thing in that there doesn't have to be any, no one has to know, no one has to be aware. It is a totally private thing and there is nothing wrong with reaching out. And I've even had some clients who have been uncomfortable with the concept of reaching to a, another human for help instead of going to God for help. And then they feel a little bit like they've let God down that they haven't been able to find healing in him. And, and so I think that it's just about having a paradigm shift in our community and really helping each other understand that it's okay to have a moment where you need to go to the doctor. You go if you have a, a fever, you'll go if you have a broken leg. So you should also go depression or symptoms of anxiety or maybe something a little more serious like psychosis. Right. And and I just wanted to tag the song because I this a lot with, with patients I take care of, even just managing, you know, very stressful situations. Those are opportunities to get help with how you can manage your stress. So I think people, when they view mental, you know, mental health or mental disorder, they're thinking huh? that, yes, can you hear? Can everyone hear? So yeah, I think, okay, so I think that people jump on the deep end like, oh, that, you know, I, I don't have, I'm not bipolar, I'm not this and that, but really it's just, you know, unresolved feeling stress anxiety, those are other things that you can also get help for to help um, you have mental wellness. Because I, I think those are some things that we don't look, consider as worthy of getting help with. So I, I hope our, our, our viewers on the call are looking. Okay. Can you say a part of that one more time? I'm having a hard time hearing you. What I was saying is, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people are dealing with stress, anxiety, um, also situations in which you can reach out for help. And you know, and to reach out for help earlier on versus later, I think is, is helpful as well, and to not be afraid of that. Um, absolutely, but I, prevention I, I think is important. Absolutely, um, and I think also in our homes, having the dialogues in our homes, asking each other about our days, because and and I'll say this as Black women, you know, traditionally we are the rocks of the families. We're so busy worried about you know what little Johnny's doing, what Grandpa's got going on, what our husbands are doing what the grandkids got go uh, going on that we always leave ourselves for last. And um, that can be very draining and stressful and sometimes we don't understand. Absolutely. We don't, we don't look at that as, you know, that I, I, I might need someone to help recharge my own batteries. Now, um, so that, so as far as that mental piece, now I want to shift a little bit to the, the, the physical, the, what do you ladies believe are, are black women as far as um, shifting the pendulum instead of just going to the physician when you're sick but going when you're well? What do you think some of those barriers are and how can we overcome those? I'm sorry. the, the um, Dr. Phoenix. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? The reception was really, really bad. Okay, so, okay, so the question is, um, I, just curious to know, um, how can we as black women uh, do better about swinging the pendulum from instead of just going to the doctor when you're sick but going to the doctor when you're well so we can promote wellness instead of just going for disease management? What are some of the barriers um, that are preventing us from, from doing that? Um, well, I, I'll say for one, um, I think as black women we definitely need to get a lot more serious about our physical health um, and Linda was talking about this in the beginning where she took a survey and most women uh, ranked the importance of emotional health um, greatly versus physical health and I think that definitely plays into why women, black women may not be going to their physicians for regular checkups or annuals or PAPs or you know um, mammograms uh, I think that definitely plays into it that until you know disease crops up then it becomes a priority and at that time it's more management than actually carrying it and I know from my standpoint my area of expertise a lot of what I do actually prevents disease and and even cures it so for example just basic exercise and nutrition I mean just by doing that you would essentially eradicate most of the common 
diseases that we're seeing today, which we didn't see before, you know, heart disease, diabetes, which black women die of in record numbers when you compare them to other races. So in, in my opinion, in order to shift things where it becomes more of a priority, I think black women need to get a lot more serious about the physical component of health. While other components I think are important, I definitely think that we should step up. Um, as far as just basic things like healthy eating and exercise. Okay. And I, and you raise a good point. And again, like I said, as black women, we've usually been the rocks of our family. So we put, you know, everyone else first and we're kind of last on the totem pole. So I think we, we as women have a, a great opportunity to reprioritize some things because if we can't take care of ourselves, we really can't take care of others. Exactly. And that's an excellent point. I mean, unless you're healthy and you're fit and you're able body, then everything around you is going to inherently fall apart eventually. Like if you are the, I mean, if, if you're going to be the rock of the family, if you're going to be the central component that holds everything together, then you need to make your health a priority. Then you need to make it paramount because in a way everything else is somewhat dependent on you. Okay. So Dr. Phoenix, could you give us some tips of you know, for for a woman who maybe is a mother or is working full time, and feels like their schedule is just already jam packed, what are do you, can you give us some recommendations of some simple things that I could do on a day to day that could get me started on that physical health journey? Well, I I take how a, much do I need to exercise? I I really take a very simplistic approach to it. Like right now, the right now, the biggest the, thing with people overall, not just black women, is that we don't move enough. We're very sedentary nowadays. You know, we're sitting more. If we need to get from point A to point B, we're driving there. We're not walking. So one of the biggest things that I'm a proponent of is actually just wearing a pedometer and getting at least 10,000 steps in a day. That's it. You know, I don't care how you do it. If you do it, you know, doing Zumba all day or if you, you know, walk five miles a day, which about 10,000 steps is equivalent to about five miles. Uh, and you can do that in an hour of, of walking, about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, depending on how fast you are. Uh, that's very simple and basic to me. And it really doesn't matter what you're doing, physical activity wise, as long as you're moving and you're accumulating those steps, then you're exercising. So that's one thing that I, you know, I'm a big proponent of. Uh, I actually just have a fitness challenge last month where I challenged a lot of women to just walk you know, and get 10,000 steps in a day and the ladies were really elated that that's all they had to do they didn't even know that they thought that being physically active meant that they had to go to Zumba five days a week or that they had to strength train you know three days a week whereas it can be as simple as just walking Okay, so and so this is this is an excellent campaign. Grab your girls and go because it makes it more enjoyable. He's going exercising with our girlfriends and kind of being a support system to each other might be helpful with getting us started. If we can have that positive, motivational self-talk, we can kind of hold each other up and get started. I know that's that's how I had to get started because it's hard. I'm gonna be honest. It's hard to kind of start this health journey on your own. So, you know, discussions like this, talking with your friends is very, very helpful. It's a great support group. Okay, so, um, so we talked about the mental, the mental wellness and how important that is. We've talked about the physical. Now, Dominique, so I know you are our financial expert. So, taking these other components and blending in finance, how, mm -hmm. how does the finance impact our wellness in all of this? How does it play a role? So, I mean, finance has it has a huge a huge impact on your just overall wellness, health wellness, um, even how we kind of expressed earlier, you know, kind of the stigma um, that surrounds, you know, mental uh, mental health and getting mental health uh, treatment. The same stigma also surrounds finances, and a lot of times people are scared to admit that they're going through a financial challenge. And just like with preventive care and your health, if you can 
fix most of these financial issues as soon as you see them about to arrive or as soon as you see um, that you know you may be short you know financially this month and it may be something as simple as calling your credit card company or calling your mortgage company and saying hey my payment's going to be a little bit late or I can't miss it I can't make it this month you'd be surprised they a lot of times they'll say you know what that's fine we won't knock you you usually done well with your payments and to me that's kind of the same thing as um, as the preventive care you know but um, it's it's there's so many statistics that show that you know especially with the with the whole recent recession and people you know losing their jobs and all the different things that have ca came from that a lot of uh, mental health issues have arisen you know even with stress depression um, just from you know losing the confidence that you had from you know having uh, the financial means that you normally had or um, even other things that I mean I've seen people get um, you know, just uh, get, get some stress, like just getting like tumors and things like that that are kind of cause some stress um, from, you know, not dealing with their finances. So, I mean, there's it's just so many ways that, you know, when you're not financially secure, you don't feel financially confident that it can really affect your finances. Um, just even when it comes down to just going and getting those preventive care or, um, you know, seeing a doctor, you know, when people a lot of people lost their jobs. They no longer had health insurance. So they couldn't afford to go see doctors, um, and then that has a you know impact on your health. And like you said, if you don't get those those things checked out early, then it, it can be worse and be more expensive than it needs to be. Which also has a lot to do with a lot of things. With you know, we we ignore parking tickets. We ignore certain financial things. And something that originally could have been twenty five dollars is now turned into a hundred. I mean, it's happened to all of us. It's happened to me. So you know, and we've all been there. Um, so it has a, a huge, huge impact on um, on our lives. It it does. And you brought up a, a, so many good points. <laughs> and I've always I've and I've always said that you know you can't have wealth. Um, uh, good health, um, because if you look at you know a lot of the studies out there, it'll say you know um, areas lower socioeconomic areas have higher incidences of all these you know disease processes and things like that. But I think we really have an opportunity to swing the pendulum. With some of the basic things, like some of the things that Dr. Phoenix was talking about, with you know. Um, exercise, eating healthier, and the things that Dr. Hicks said about managing our stress, um, you know, depression, unresolved feelings, and then our finances. So I don't, you know, actually not till this conversation could, could I really, really digest how intertwined all of these things are. They're all very important components of wellness. So I'm hoping that our listeners are, are latching on to our messages and they're going to grab their girls and go um, and really address some of these things. So. Um, Let's see if I have. Um, do we have any questions from anyone on the call? Actually, um, I just wanted to interject for a minute. Oh, sure, go ahead. Um, Dominique, thank you so much for that because I have a parking ticket that I need to pay, and you just <laughs> jogged my memory. It's like it was due, so I, now I have a fine on top of it because it was like due yesterday. While you were saying it, I was like, oh my. We've all God. been there. Oh, We've been all there. been there. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. <laughs> $900 later. <laughs> and, and I think the key is a word that we need to And I think to, uh, a lot stress. of the things that we're talking about. And just, in health psychology, we talk a lot about how you know stress is the way the world impacts our body, our biology. It's how something that you see becomes something actually pretty dangerous to your body. You all these hormones that cascade. And so we talk a lot about you know how to relieve stress psychologically. Meditation, prayer deep breathing, exercise. Exercise releases endorphins and oxytocin and so many great hormones that actually cause you to decrease levels of stress. And we have so much chronic stress in the world that we live in today that it's so important to find whatever relieves your stress, whether it's knitting, whether it's, you know, sitting down and reading a book for five minutes even, you know, because you, you're busy. You can't always have time to dedicate to 40 minutes of yoga in the morning. But, um, whatever it might be, really finding ways to decrease those levels of like toxic hormones that we build up from stress. Down a list of things you can do. If you can say some of those things again for us, you said you should try knitting, try, you mentioned a list yeah, of activities. Anything, for me, I'm a crafter. I, I need some of those. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a crafter, okay? So like literally spray painting pumpkins for Halloween was something that decreased stress for me. So it's about being creative and really not, you know, sometimes feeling silly, sometimes dancing around your house, getting active, releasing positive hormones like endorphins, getting and, and for a lot of people their anxiety and their stress is very physical. African American women tend to do what's called somaticize. So we turn our stress into physical problems. They manifest physically as pains and things like that. So you want to be active. You want to knit even, um, do crafts, play with your kids, be on the floor, be, um, you know, like talk to your friends. As for women, talking is a way that we relieve so much stress. Women use 4,000 more words a day than the average man. And, and we also tend to live a little bit longer. So I don't know if that's the reason. But talking to your friends, going out, being social. Being social increases levels of oxytocin, and we want oxytocin. It's a bonding hormone. It's great. Um, so being social, being creative, writing, reading, yoga, meditation, prayer, um, anything really, anything that brings you joy or makes you happy. That's good. Even if you just pick one, just one thing mm -hmm. alone probably will make a big difference. Absolutely. That's good to one know. Thing. And again, I think, uh, I said this earlier, sometimes as women, you know, we're so focused on our career, our family, and other things, we don't take the time for ourselves. So this is an opportunity to focus on ourselves, not being selfish, but, you know, taking the opportunity to really focus on our mental wellness, our physical wellness, and as well as our financial wellness, so we can continue to be that strong rock of the family um, and, that, and that career woman as well. And it is really like when you get on an airplane... Oh. When you're on an airplane, the first thing they say is, whose mask goes on first if it's you and a child? Yours. Because if you pass out, you can't take care of the person next to you. And so it's really important as black women, in a, 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 our culture is very based on women. And so we really do need to be able to take care of ourselves, too. So, uh, uh, Dr. Phoenix, anything else that you want, you want to add to that um to that conversation? No, uh, um, overall I think you know everyone had excellent points. I love that we were able to touch on different areas of wellness based on our expertise. Um, you know I definitely grabbed a, a bunch of tips from the financial and the you know emotional psychological standpoint. I'll say for myself uh, being a fitness expert, a physician, I, I do feel like Interestingly, when I when I watch people, when I'm dealing with people from the physical standpoint, uh, I actually see people kind of in a, um, I, I guess a retroactive way. So, for for example, like you'll take a woman who's who's you know emotionally she's dealing with things. She may have self esteem issues. She may not you know have her finances in order um, and then she's overweight on top of it so she starts working out regularly she starts making fitness a priority what I've seen a lot of times is that when these women start getting physically fit they actually start getting the rest of their life in order um, if anyone kind of understands what I'm saying so I've, I've seen so many women that are overweight or obese once they start working out regularly once they start eating well they'll lose the weight they'll gain their health and then they naturally start to put the pieces together in other aspects of their life it's just something that ends up falling into place so I don't think you necessarily have to start from any particular point of wellness I think naturally when you start wanting to get one facet together it's ultimately going to spill over into other areas of your life where you're going to want to get everything in order so that's something that I've noticed personally dealing with a lot of people you know oftentimes it's it's weight issues it's weight loss or what have you I find a lot of times with these women once they start losing the weight once they start getting fit once they start making healthier food choices or what have you it inherently just spills over into other areas of their life whether you know if they're like in a bad relationship with someone and they're dealing with that from a psychological emotional standpoint they'll actually exit the relationship because they realize that you know um, relationship that state doesn't jive with who they want to be anymore so that's something that I've noticed right and actually now that you just described that I've actually I've seen that happen for quite a for quite a few people um, so thank you for bringing that up. Now, what about the women who have, uh, who 
don't know where to start. Maybe you know, struggling with some health issues, maybe some uh, well mental wellness issues and financial, and are just kind of at you know the end of their rope, just who've almost given up. Any words of encouragement or suggestions for them? For women who are, are at the end of, they women feel like the everything is coming in at one time. Points in our lives. Yes, yes. So for those women who, you know, and I, and I have to say, I, I've been there, and I'll share this. I used to be a size 16 at one point. I'm a size 6 now. And, you know, during that time, you know, I was overweight. I wasn't happy with what I looked like, so I was a little depressed. I was stressed. Um, and, you know, when I didn't feel good about myself, I didn't make the best financial choices and decisions about, you know, things. And it was just, and quite honestly, I can't even remember how I got to the point where I am now. But I got to a point where I, I, I just got tired. And I said, you know, enough is enough. So... But I and but I can't really remember what triggered that for me. Any any words of encouragement for women who might be in those situations? I think you made a good point. I think that you know, for, no. for a lot of people to make changes, they have to have that. I'm just tired of this, and that's usually when most people are like, okay, I'm just tired of this, whatever it may be. I'm tired of being overweight. I'm tired of being broke. I am tired of being sad and depressed, or whatever it may be. Um, and that usually triggers that change. And I think that when you do get to that point, I give you a round of applause because that's when you're about to really start going. Because it's pretty rare you see someone who says, I can't do this anymore. I want to change. And they go back. They usually change. They change for the best. And I think that when you do decide that you want to change, you need to you know, reach out to your family and friends. And nine times out of ten, they will support you in it. The one thing I, the reason I started the social money tour is I wanted to make money a social experience. And I wanted to show people that you've been broke, I've been broke, we've all been broke, right? But no one talks about it. We've all been behind on a credit card bill. We've all done these things, right? But we act like none of us have. And I think that when we start talking about it, someone can say, you know what? I was doing the same thing. And I did this. Or I called this person. Or I went to, you know, uh, you know, Dr. Alice or whoever it may be, right? And um, I think that having those conversations, you know, if you are at that point, start sharing your story and you'll realize that you're not the only one going through these certain things. And they'll also be able to just provide you with resources and, and people you can talk to that can kind of help you make that, that next step. And just to, to piggyback on that, yes, I think, I think that, just to, to piggyback on that, I'm sorry, were you speaking? I'm sorry, were you speaking? No, go ahead. Um, I think we all inherently um, think we all know inherently where it is that we need to start and what it is that we need to do. It's just fear within ourselves that holds us back. And once you hit that, that you know, that period, that mark where it's like enough, I'm tired, and you just kind of snap, and you're ready to, you know, get out of that dysfunctional comfort uh, into some discomfort to actually change, you'll know what you need to do. I really haven't, I mean, I've, I have girlfriends who literally, you know, have reached points where maybe they didn't like their career or they were in a really horrible relationship. They always knew what they wanted to do. Um, they just were fearful about making, taking that step, you know, out of that comfortable but, you know, dysfunctional situation. So I feel like it isn't even really a case of someone needs to step in and tell you, okay, you need to exercise first or you need to balance your checks first, checkbook first. It's a matter of you need to hit that point where you're like, okay, enough is enough, like Dominique was saying, and then you start moving out of it strategically. And you'll know what it is that you need to do first, in my opinion. I love that. I love that. Dr. Phoenix, I think that's great because to me the center of what both of you are saying is that it's the awareness. I think that we need to have an awareness of our discomfort because I think sometimes we don't even know when we are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But I think when you, when, once you really become aware and you know like, okay, I don't like where I am, whether it's weight, whether it's financially, whether it's you know mentally, whether it's occupationally, 
then I think you will begin to find those those solutions. Like Dr. Phoenix was saying, there's this the way we look at cognitive therapy a lot of the time is that your brain comes up with solutions to the problems on its own. You just have to present yourself with the right problem. Sometimes we don't ask ourselves questions in the right way, and we present them to ourselves in a way that actually makes us feel disempowered instead of empowered. Mm -hmm. And so posing questions in a positive way, meaning the presence of. So saying, you know, sometimes saying, well, I don't know what to do. What should I do? What should I do? That doesn't give you any direction. You don't know where you're going. But sometimes sitting down and brainstorming, writing down all the things that you want. I really do believe in, like, those um, those boards. Have you guys done those? Has vision done boards? Those, those, um, yeah, vision boards. I really believe in writing things down. I believe in seeing things. I believe in making things plain, putting things right in front of your face so that you can begin to ask yourself the right questions. You can begin to put yourself in the right direction. If you want to be in shape, put a picture up of you when you were in shape. Have pictures of, you know, the, the things that you want to eat instead of the things you don't want to eat. If you have a picture of chocolate cake on your wall, all you're thinking about is chocolate cake. <laughs> as opposed to putting as opposed to thinking about quinoa and kale and carrots and things that you should be eating, right? <laughs> so I think yeah, it's important think, to yeah, to give yourself the right things. I'm sorry, Doctor Hicks. Go ahead. No, go, Doctor Phoenix. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, so we you actually saying, have. You had mentioned about the chocolate cake on the wall and whatnot. I, I've seen. I, I've had so many um, situations, and Sharita and I have gone to like Nike classes and and stuff like that. So naturally, from like the fitness standpoint, I have so many acquaintances, girlfriends that want to get in shape, and I'm right there to give them the information. And that's why I say it, it really comes from you inherently in reaching that point where you're just uncomfortable and you just accept that you're unhappy. Because I have so many acquaintances that they tell me they're like, I want to lose 15 pounds. I want to lose 10 pounds and I'll tell them okay we're, we're gonna go to the gym this week meet me you know at 6 a.m. we're gonna go work out or even meet me whatever time is convenient for you and we'll go work out and I get ex every excuse under the sun at why they can't make it at the end of the day you know I just tell them I'm like you're not ready yet you know when you when you really hit that point where you're just tired of the extra 15 pounds come and see me because you haven't hit that point yet because anyone who's really at that point where they're just, you know, I want to change my body, I want to get healthy, nothing's going to keep them out of that gym. It doesn't matter if it's 4 a.m. in the morning, they're going to be up exercising if that's what they want to do. And in mental health, we've we had some wonderful... Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. We've been having some great organic conversations, but I wanted to get to some of our viewer questions. So I'm just going to go down and um, list some of our questions. We have a question from Bran, and she says here, since income and finances can be a barrier to wellness for black women, what are some ways to manage the stress and competing priorities that may get in the way of wellness? Do one of our panelists want to take that question? She says, since income and finances can be a barrier for wellness, um, what are some ways to manage stress and competing priorities that may get in the way of wellness? Um, Dr. Hicks? Or? Sure. I think lots of things get in the way. And I think, like I said earlier, writing things down is helpful because things are always bigger in your head than they are in reality. And so prioritizing, creating, um, I've created these um, hierarchy lists where I break a, t a page into four pieces and I do like pros and cons. And so that's one thing that helps me is um, writing it down, having it in front of me so I can organize. So, you know, you put your finances there, you put, you know, your physical health and things that you might be dealing with. Maybe you need to get health insurance. Maybe you need to get a, a different job so you can get better health insurance. Who knows? But helping you really prioritize and organize because um, one of the killers of motivation is anxiety. The more anxious you are, the less likely you are to act. So there's actually a, a curve that anxiety to a certain point is helpful, but once you have too much, it gets to a point to where you just you can't move at all, you're frozen. And so you have to figure out how you manage your anxiety. For me, it's lists, pictures, things like that. So that would be the advice that I would give. Okay. Thank I, you I for answering that. So I'm gonna go. 
Oh, sorry. I was going to go to our next question. I'm sorry because we have a lot of questions here. I want to get to everyone's. Um, uh, would let's see, and this comes from Shannon. Uh, would you suggest any quick reference material for financial health and mental health? What are your favorite books on these topics? So it looks like our our viewers want some references to go back and read. So would you ladies suggest any books that they can reference after this Google chat? Well, I'm going to plug my book <laughs> since no one's recommending any books yet. Uh, yeah, I'm big on, uh, I actually love reading um, fitness book and self-help books. So uh, from the fitness standpoint, I would recommend my book, And That's Why You're Fat. I think that's a great book that people can start out with, and it, and it delves around in different components of physical fitness for someone who's considered like a fitness newbie if you don't really know where to start. Um, or if you've just heard a lot of fitness myths and you're trying to decipher whether this is you know accurate or not, I would check that out. Um, you know, that's one book from, let's see. I mean, I think the and even another place that I love going to for information, honestly, is YouTube. Uh, I think I call it like the University of YouTube. I think you can find pretty much anything you want to learn more about on YouTube. So I would say, you know, start whatever topic it is that you want to research. I would jump on YouTube and literally like go on there. If it's something, you know, um, physical fitness related or exercise, then, you know, you can check out my channel. But I think um, YouTube is a wonderful place to go if you're just looking for information in general because you have so many experts and literally anything from like mental health to basket weaving you can find on YouTube so that's something I would recommend okay great um, any other book Nance books on this other panelists that you can suggest well for relationship health because I think relationships are so important um, there's one book that I really love called hold me tight and it talks a lot about how to work out dynamic problems that you may have with the person you're in a relationship with. Because I feel like also if you have trouble at home, it leaks into a lot of other areas of your life. So I love that book by Dr. Sue Johnson. Okay. All right. And let's see. Um, th th I don't know if this is a, a comment or a question or more of a comment, but one of the women said that it's, there seems to be a misconception that when women go out to seek help for you know mental financial um, and wellness help that it is expensive um, are there more affordable routes for people um, who who want assistance in improving this overall health um, I would I would say it's it's not always you know expensive and as I said earlier I think that you know with a lot of the health things hopefully insurance can handle um, you know bulk of the expense um, but for more from a finance perspective I mean there's a lot of just really awesome uh, nonprofit organizations that can help people with their finances if you feel like you can't afford to meet with a financial advisor or a financial planner um, and you know it's kind of looking your area for like you know nonprofit um, financial help or things like that you know it will, it will come up for your area um, you can always check out my site, DominiqueBroadway.com. We have very low cost, just affordable and efficient and effective um, financial help that we offer um, for, for our clients. Um, but I think, you know, overall, there's, you know, just really using your resources. And I think, like, being on this, on this Google Hangout is really the first step, is just asking. I think a lot of times people just assume, I can't afford to go see a, a therapist or I can't afford to meet with a financial planner, but you haven't really done the research. So um, I think that, you know, that's really the way just to kind of just, just start asking and, and, you know, checking out some of our sites. Um, the Black Women's Health Imperative, I'm sure, has awesome resources to all of our information in addition to, um, just you know, there's other resources that they will recommend just to kind of give you that overall wellness. I think that's that's a great starting point. I also wanted to to add yeah, something to that. Do you mind if I add something to that? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it's important to also so one of the best tips of advice someone gave me because I think I'm a very very independent kind of inside my head type of person so I tend to be very self-reliant 
And one of the best bits of advice someone gave to me is to learn to expand my social circle and to talk to people. You know, uh, it, it doesn't even always have to be like something on a contractual basis where you're paying someone to give you advice. Sometimes by just expanding your social circle and getting to know different types of people outside of, you know, just your immediate area and, you know, stepping out of that comfort zone, you'd be surprised at the different types of advisors that you can meet, people that would be more than willing to lend their time and their advice to you for free. Uh, I know that's been the case with me. I've met so many mentors just engaging people and, and talking to people and showing a genuine interest in befriending people. So, it, you know, there were times where you know I feel like everyone benefits from couch time but I have wonderful mentors around me that I can go to and they serve as my quote-unquote therapist and I don't have to pay for them you know so I would actually say to people to start learning to talk to individuals and and form genuine bonds and relationships with people because there are so many people out there that can serve as advisors to you where you don't have to if if money is an issue where you don't have to pay for that advice okay yeah I, I agree and I have two websites as well one is the imperative website they have a lot of resources on there which is bwhi.org and the other is NAMI NAMI which is a, re, a mental health resource and you can find they can find you affordable mental health care nationwide okay and Dominique um, as far as financial information um, where else can people go for resources um, I would say um, obviously my website DominiqueBroadway.com there's some other um, great websites and I'm really into apps right now and there's a lot of just great apps like mint.com or um, let's say simple credit karma credit sesame just kind of provide you with overall picture of your financial health in addition to the app that I'm creating we'll talk about that later but uh, in addition to um, you know providing you with a snapshot of what your finances are a lot of these will also just give you advice and, and snippets of information um, that can just kind of help you have a little bit more clarity on your finances um, so mint.com is great um, like I said, the Credit Common, Credit Sesame, uh, Check is another one. These are all just great, 100% free tools you can use to help manage your finances. Can you hear Dominique anymore? No. Oh, I'm I'm not sorry. Oh. I think Nurse Alice has her mute on. Yeah, she does. Your mute's oh. on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. I well, I don't know where it well, I can't believe the hour is over. I mean, we had such a great conversation, and I wish we could go longer. Um, but a lot of, you know, we weren't able to get to everyone's questions. But for those questions we weren't able to address, they will be addressed on the um, Imperatives website, as well as you can go to the Imperatives website for uh, tremendous other, you know, uh, information on other uh, resources. You'll find out information on our panelists, more about what what they're doing and where you can find them. And um, Gosh, we ran out of time so quickly. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to. I'm, is it, am I turning it over to Valerie? Valerie, it's too yes, soon. Yes, you are. Like Thank it. you, Nurse Alice. We really appreciate your expertise in guiding us through this discussion. And I really want to thank our panel of experts for being part of this powerful and truly powerful room full of sisters that we've had this afternoon. And as was mentioned, this discussion is really the first step in our overall initiative called Grab Your Girls and Go. And we really do want to make sure that we provide information, resources, messages, materials, everything that's needed in order to help women connect those dots, putting all the pieces together as one of our panelists mentioned, and making sure that it's done in a way that fits in with all of our lives. I think we can all find reasons why we can't make those changes that we've heard about this afternoon, but finding those practical steps that we can all put into place and apply to our daily lives is what this initiative is all about. And looking at those small changes, those small steps that we can take 
and make in our lives. And we did hear quite a bit about some of the tips that have been provided by our panel of experts and just you know some of the things that can help us eat healthier, move more, and get up and moving are things that we really want to take a closer look at and make sure we're able to share with the women that we work with all across the country. And simple steps like taking stairs instead of taking the elevator or escalator. Uh, getting up, if, for those of us that have office jobs and sit at our desks most of the day, making sure that it's important to get up and walk around several times throughout the day. So those small steps, small pieces of action that we can take and put into our lives are what Grab Your Girls and Go is all about. And again, making sure that we support one another in doing that. And I think we've had a good demonstration of that support, that expertise, and those strong tips and techniques that we can apply to our lives from our partner, uh, organizations as well as from the participants that we've had on this panel today. So I'd like to thank Nurse Alice and I'd like to thank our experts, Dr. Phoenix Austin, Dr. Allison Hicks, and uh, Ms. Broadway for their expertise and helping us understand how to connect our physical, emotional, and financial wellness. And be on the lookout for more from us on our website, www.bwhi.org, and be sure to take part in our Grab Your Girls and Go initiative once we launch in December. So thank you and have a wonderful afternoon.